Hi guys, I'm Ricky Morton of the Rock and Roll Express, and throughout my whole career, everybody has asked me, even as today, what is the difference between new school and old school? There's neither one. It's called the right damn way. I'm right here today. Great pleasure. Great compliment to even sit here beside him, one of the greatest wrestlers of all times. Not only single wrestling, but great in tag team wrestling, as I know, is Mr. Ole Anderson. Well, that's a nice introduction, I thank you. Well, you're very welcome, and you got that part right. At the first of it, it was called Mr. Because throughout the years, it's going, you know, uh, Ole, uh, Yeah, that's the way it always was, Ole. Yes, sir. What the hell is it? Yes, sir, shit. No, I know, but no, they, uh, but throughout the years, you know, uh, especially me being on the road, it, 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 and I meet a lot of young kids in the wrestling business, and they go back, and you know they know the Four Horsemen, you know Ole Anderson, Arn Anderson, but we we got to go back before that because you know a lot of guys, most of them have no clue about our wrestling history. We used to be with Gene Anderson, Laurel Anderson, and uh, will you give us a little information about that? Well, how that all started off? I was wrestling up in Canada at the time, and I hated it. <laughs> I didn't like Stu Hart. I didn't like his wrestling. I hated the whole goddamn deal. So I came back to Minnesota, where I'm from, and Lars, his real name was Larry Hennemey, he and I went to college together. Yes. Uh, he played football, and he was a big star in the football team, and then he got into wrestling, amateur wrestling. And uh, he said, listen, Come on down to the Carolinas, and we'll wrestle for Stu, for uh, Jim Crockett. And Jim I Crockett said, "Senior, right?" Yeah, yes. Yeah. I said, "Am I going to make any money?" He said, "Yeah." Okay, because that's the only thing I wanted to do in the world was make money. I didn't give a shit about nothing else. <laughs> I could wrestle, like Lars could wrestle. We were both pretty good wrestlers. And we got with Gene, and Gene used to wrestle in high school. And so we formed a three-man, and they had six-man tag matches in the Carolinas at that time. And old man Crockett said, you're welcome to come here and hope you make a lot of money. And I said, well, yeah, you pay me, and you, you pay me a lot of money, and I'll make a lot of money. But anyhow. We wrestled there for a little less than a year. And then Lars wanted to go back to Minnesota to be a superstar in Minnesota. And I didn't give a damn about going back to Minnesota, where I'm from. And Gene was from Minnesota. Is that the time when uh, Vern Gagne was running it? Yes. Did he own it? Well, Vern Gagne broke me in. Yes, sir. Well, Vern Gagne broke all of us in. He got Gene in and he got Lars in. Uh, with me, he put me with Danny Hodge. Okay. After Danny Hodge got done with me, I had to go to the hospital for a week. I was fixing to say, holy. <laughs> well, what, uh, what kind of personality clashes was that about? Please tell me. Well, Danny Hodge was so good at what he, well, he was a great wrestler. What the hell? Yes, yes, sir. But he was the only one that I know that could take a pair of players, regular pair of players, uh -huh. and break them. Everybody said that's a bunch of bullshit. No, I was there when he broke him. And if you don't believe that, let him grab a hold of you and see what he can do. Oh, he broke some of my ribs when he wrestled me and really screwed me up. Well, I had to go to the hospital, that's all. And Vern Gagne looked at me and said, looks like you're hurt a little bit more than we thought. Well, we waited for the ambulance to come and they took me down and took me off to the hospital. That's how I started wrestling. Right. When I got out of the hospital, it took me about two or three months before I could, because the broken ribs caused a lot of goddamn pain for a while. And uh, now, is, is this from Danny Hodge or, or from training? Or from no, it's from Danny Hodge. Hodge. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, from Danny Hodge. Okay, y'all were working an angle together? Or no. He was your I, partner in this team. No, no, he was. He was, he was going to show me what wrestling was all about. Oh, shit. Okay. 
No, right. and, you know, I didn't even know who the hell he was. I read about Danny Hodge in the newspapers or whatever it might be because when I was in high school, we had pictures of Danny Hodge, but I didn't pay no attention to that. He was a national champion of some damn shit. I didn't give a damn. But now when I met him, I was 200 and 260 pounds and he was about 190 pounds. I said, what the hell is that? Yes, sir. I figured I'll beat the shit out of him. <laughs> Can I ask I you didn't. this before you get started? Yeah, go was ahead. this a great education in your life? I mean, just to, to meet somebody like that. Well, you know, as good as he was, and he was real damn good, yeah. nobody that I know of ever made it anywhere with Danny Hodge. He was a national champion. Yes, sir. And he won all of his matches when he was in Oklahoma. And what else can you say about it? But I didn't know, like I say, people thought I was BSing, but he could take a pair of players and squeeze them and break them. And break them. Who do you know can do that? There's nobody I know. No. And, and leading on to that, because I wanted to know, you know, because our business is about drawing people. Was Denny Hodge, did he teach you anything about drawing money in no, the business? No, no, he no. He just taught you all about you. No. All he did was go ahead and bust my ribs and let me know that getting into wrestling wasn't going to be that easy. Uh, yes. <laughs> and. Later on, I came back to Vernon after I got my risen better. Two or three months later, I said, Vern, I know Danny has beat the shit out of me. I, I don't argue that. I said, but there's somebody here that I'm going to beat. Let's find out who it is. Oh, great. And there's a bunch of guys that he had there that were working, you know, uh, doing matches on TV that, yes. that I beat. And anyway, Vern just kind of fell in love with me in the sense that he said, here's a kid, most people that got hurt like that, you'd never see him again. They ran and they never came back. I was the only one that Vern knew that came back after Danny Hodge kicked the shit out of him. And we're looking for more goddamn it guys to wrestle. Danny Hodge, yeah, you beat me, but there's got to be some son bitch here I'm going to beat. So let's find out who it is. And I think Vern really liked, liked that idea. And so they sent me down to uh, Omaha and I became the champion in Omaha. Why? I, I don't know to this day why. I don't care why. When Gene and I got together later on, later that year as a matter of fact, Gene broke, was broken in by Vern too, not the same way, but he didn't have to wrestle Danny Hodge. <laughs> okay. But, uh, Gene just got in the business, and Gene said to me, what the hell, what the hell do you want to do in the business? Make money? I said, yeah. What else is there? There's there, not, nothing else I want to do. I didn't give a shit about beating the hell out of anybody. I did, but I didn't do it just because I wanted to. I didn't do it because it was fun. The only thing I really wanted to do was make money. Well, I got you right there. And, and, and as the process of doing that, you know, when you met Gene, and, and I know for me, I was raised in a wrestling family, but understand it took me a long time, even being raised in a wrestling family, is to understand what our business was about. And it was about putting asses in the seats, and that it was, was it. about getting paid every week. What time did you learn that? Was it with, with the time with Gene? Oh. No, I, I mean, I, I was that way right away. Yes, sir. I knew damn well I wanted to make money. I didn't give a shit about nothing else. Okay. You know, I was going to play football. You know what football uh, players made back then? No, sir, I didn't. Well, well, you know what they wanted? $78,000. How much? Seven or $8,000. You know, I think Wahoo A told year. Me. Yeah, I think Wahoo told me back when he played with the Jets, he was before Joe Namath came. He was the highest player. He got paid for the Jets and he made twelve grand a year. That's and, it. it. Yes. And That's it. And, that and so, was, yeah, so it, when Vern said you're going to play football. <laughs> okay, I got you. All right. Now, and, I, and that's great, man. That's very interesting. But after that went through, I only, you know, learning our business as time process. So were you offered a booker job or was that something that you wanted? No, to no, 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 no. Uh, no, I, I, I wrestled, I wrestled for uh, Crockett, uh -huh. and 
I wrestled for Crockett, and then I wrestled for uh, what's his name? Uh, Eddie uh, Graham? Uh, no, 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 no. The guy, in, guy here in Atlanta. Barnett. Barnett. Yes, sir. I'm forgetting his name. I do too. And he came up to me, and he said, "I wrestled down there one time for four months, something like that, in 1974, I think." And apparently he liked what he saw. And he came to me in 1976 and said, you want to come back down to Atlanta? I said, and do what? He said, well, I'll let you be the booker. How's that? Well, the thing that got me, everything was money to me. So he offered me I think it was 500 bucks a week to be the booker. Okay, was that? That was for the plus whatever I made. Staff. Okay, that's what I'm gonna say. 500 dollars plus of what you made. Yeah, yeah, whatever I made wrestling. Okay, great. Yeah, but I wrestled for him, or I booked for him. Well, not even one year. He had bookers there that were. They stayed there for three months, maybe two months. He got Bill Watts in there, and he, Bill Watts stayed for two months, and he fucking fired Bill Watts. The only guy they never fired was me. Okay. Why? Because he made money with me. Yeah, I did shit that he thought was crazy, and he said, oh, my boy, are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> I said, yeah, that's what I want to do, and that's what I'm going to do. And then later on, he would say, oh, my boy, you've done it again. I did, we sold the place out or whatever it might be. The Candy Kid. And so, of all the people that he had booking for him, and he had a lot of different people booking for him, the only one that stayed there the longest was me, and he never fired me. I quit each time, I quit. And I quit in 1970. I quit because I had a sawmill up in Wisconsin that I was running. Yes, and I thought I was gonna make a lot of money. I did make a lot of money, but I loved the wrestling part, and he called me up at the sawmill. He said, oh my boy, are you ready to come home? I said, uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, yeah, I think I'd like to come back. He said, I'll make you a deal you can't refuse. He paid me $2,000 a week, plus what I made wrestling. I ended up making $250,000 a year. If you go back to 19, whatever it was, 76, something like that, I'll bet nobody made $250,000 a year. Well, no, they couldn't. That's, or very that's few people did. The money. And that, now, did, at that time, I mean, when you stayed there, when you, whenever you did leave Atlanta, did, did you book for Jimmy Crockett after that? Or did? What I did is I quit working for uh, uh, Barnett. I just got tired of a lot of shit. Oh yeah. And uh, I went went back to Minnesota. And Crockett called me up. And he had George Scott was booking for him. Mm -hmm. And he said, "Would you like to come and book for me?" I said, "You want me to call George Scott? What the hell?" He said, "Well, George Scott and I had a little." So I said, "Yeah, I was ready to come back to work." So I came back to I came to Crockett in Charlotte, and the thing that drove me crazy was David Crockett. He didn't know shit about anything, but he thought he knew everything. And he would drive me here and there. I love this man. Go ahead. And, and, he, and, he, and he drove me crazy. He's just, he's a dumb fuck. And Jimmy was okay, but he had ideas too. Was this after, after Seeger died? Yes. Okay. Yeah. When Jimmy was the whole guy, the yes. whole goddamn shot. Him and uh, what the hell was this guy's name? Anyway, his uh, brother-in-law. His his, oh, his uh, sister married. You know what? He married Francis, and I did that. Did I? I know the name. This is well. Hi, Tom. Uh, this is well as anybody. But you know, going in with this. But I know when you took over the book. 
in Atlanta, when you did have the book in Atlanta, people talk about, and I gotta say this, and this is my opinion, and I, and I noticed that was when you were the booker there, before all the big time, before the Huck Hogan's, and before all this right here, that people didn't realize, and to me, and I wanna get your opinion on this, was Tommy Wildfire Rich. You know, I, you know, I told guys in a long time, I said, you guys did not know before all these guys made these millions and millions of dollars of how a baby face was over. And I noticed back in those days, because I used to watch TBS TV when you booked with Tommy. Were you a part of Tommy's career? Were you a part? Because I've seen you work with him a lot. What do you mean, was I a part? Oh, I mean, was you the one that if really... If he wouldn't have had me, he wouldn't have done a damn thing. Well, I know. Barnett you. fell in love with him. Okay. And Barnett said, let's make him a wrestler. And I said, geez, that kid ain't gonna fuck, he can't do nothing. The first match I put him with was uh, the black guy. Uh, who was the black guy, big black guy? Tony Atlas? No, 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 no. Big fat son of a bitch. Ray uh, Candy? Who? Ray Candy? No, 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 no. He was well known. Okay, yeah. Uh, Who's the, who? Help me Abdullah, out here. Abdullah, Abdullah, Abdullah. Oh, okay, Abdullah. Abdullah, yeah. Well, Ab I told Abdullah, I said, listen, don't beat the shit out of him. Beat him, beat him in a minute or two, but don't beat the shit out of him and then goddamn cover him. Just throw one punch or two and then cover him and, that, and beat him, that's it. Well, Barnett said, oh my God, you've killed him. Oh, we got to get rid of Tommy Rich, you know. I said, Jim, just, just, just wait, just wait. The next week, I put Tommy Rich against him again. Tommy did an interview. I told him what to say. I said, Tommy, tell him that you know you got beat by Abdullah. You're not questioning that. But your mom and dad told you never, ever give up. And I'm not giving up now. I want to wrestle Abdullah again. Well, the second time he wrestled him, Abdullah beat him in about a minute and a half. But we, I did one thing that was different. I said, when Tommy gets beat, I want you guys that are here in the back, I want you to run down to the ringside and help Tommy Rich get up. And Tommy, you say, just leave me alone, just leave me alone. I'll get it myself. The guys went down there. Tommy was just laying in the ring. I'll beat the shit. And the guys went to grab a hold of me. No, 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 no. And worked his ass off and he got the first rope, the second rope. Then they came to help him get, got to the third rope. And he, uh, and he got up by himself. The people went fucking crazy. They just cheered the shit out of Tommy Rich who got the crap beat out of him. So, the next week, maybe it was the third week maybe, we had a break and then there was like two weeks later. Tommy Rich goes down there and he gets beat again. But the difference is, Rock Hunter was uh, Abdullah's manager. Rock Hunter wanted Abdullah to come in the ring and beat the shit out of him, get the crack up. And Tommy Rich, for the first time, threw one punch at Abdullah. Abdullah didn't go down, but he just... He the, fact that he threw, uh, the fact that he threw the punch was made the people. And when I got Tommy Rich on the TV again, he says, I know I can't beat Abdullah. I, I, I know that but I want to wrestle him again. Wow. The people went crazy over that. They said, oh, and even Barnett said, oh my boy, you've done it again. <laughs> yeah. And I said, well, yeah, you just let me do it. I'll, I'll figure things out. And, you, know, and I'll, you know, I'm just like you. I want to make as much money as I can make too. And so what I'm doing is doing what I think the people are going to want to see. They don't know it yet, but they will know when they, when they see what I do or they see what Tommy Rich is doing. And we made Tommy Rich into the hottest goddamn baby face that we had at that time. Yeah, well, you know two guys that were pretty close to that idea? Who was that? 
You and your that, partner. That, uh, well, thank you very much. I appreciate You know, and, and it's what I try to explain to a lot of guys, the ones that don't know our wrestling history, about people like that, about Tommy Rich, how over he was in our business, but what it took to get him over. Because back then, like you said, we did have we didn't have writers, we had bookers. And we had guys that put all the programs together as the one that did that. But I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna ask you, because I know, I don't know if you've been asked this before, as being a tag team wrestler, what is the best run you had and who with? And what is your worst run you had and who with? The best one I think was with uh, uh, Wahoo and uh, Paul Jones. This happened in the in well, NBA Crockett territory? Yeah, well. Fill me in about We that, made money, that's all. I wanted to know what. Well, no, know. but I mean, we, we had runs with the uh, wrestling number one and wrestling number two. Yes. We sold out the goddamn Omni, we sold out the, the auditorium. Uh, everything, as far as I was concerned, was possible with, with, with maybe not everybody, but pretty much everybody, to sell a goddamn place out. That was the whole deal. Yes. If you didn't sell out, I switched around to somebody else. And I thought that if Gene and I did what we're supposed to do, that we could sell a thing out with anybody. Now, if the guys weren't worth a shit, then piss on them. I remember when we got with you. Yes, I'll fix You and your partner. I says, these guys ain't worth a shit for Christ's sake. The two of you didn't weigh, well, the two of you didn't weigh as much as I weighed. Okay. And I'm I says, to, I, I, I want to stop you here for Go ahead, all right, stop me there. Because I wanted to tell you something. You know, I, it is business, especially me being young, and the first time I met you, just intimidation killed me. But this is a long time ago. This is back at TBS when Barnett ran it, and I just come in on Saturday mornings and you know, and just did my thing, did, you know, put the guys over. But then we went on to uh, Jimmy Crockett, and, and you know, Robert and I were there, and we did a an angle with with you and Only, and you and uh, you and Only, you and Arn, and it was uh, one of the greatest things was in that we, and the same thing, brow beating every day. I, I'm not big enough to be in this business. But I, I want, because you said something to me one night, and it stuck into my mind. And we're here, we're, we did this thing with you and Arnold, we're selling out everywhere. And Robert and I hit the rink. And naturally, you know, my partner Robert, and I'm not trying to take nothing away, he went with Arnold. <laughs> I always got Oli every night, okay? So I have you in the corner. I don't know if you remember, this is in Hampton Arena. I have hit you 900 times, and you're holding on to the rope. And finally, I stopped and I went to the ring. Middle of the ring, I took a bump, and you ran over, you grabbed me, you picked me up, you went, what the hell did you just do? And I'm not trying to to be insulting to you or say anything, but I said, if you wouldn't go down, I thought I would. And when I told you that, you grabbed me, you says, I don't know whether to whoop your goddamn ass or to shake your hand, you got more balls than a Brahma bull. And then after that, only. I don't know. I don't know if you remember that. Me and you had some of the greatest matches, not only in tag matches, but single matches. You worked with me then. I don't, do, do you, can you relate to that or don't remember? Don't remember nothing. Okay, but I, don't, I was, but I wanted you to know that. But after that, and you got to understand, one of the best runs, and I can say this, you know, people ask me about the, the runs. We had great runs with the Midnight Express. We sold out everywhere. We had great runs with the Russians. That's what got us over. But the ones that drew money actually sold out was with you and Arn. Did you know that? You know, remember when we had the Rock and Roll Super Summer Sizzling Tour, where we had every spot show in the world, and everybody else went to Hawaii on a vacation, and we sold because out. Because they knew the ter territory was going to go to hell. And we sold out every place that we went to. Yep. And I'm not sitting here and putting myself, I'm just trying to no, to no, understand, no. The, to make people understand what we did and how we worked uh, to draw money. But now, you know, since we got to that, and we got to that, and that's over, but I just wanted to tell you that. But you, I, I never forget you, Bradley, so don't know what to shake your hand or whoop your goddamn ass. But, well, but I, you coming. know, at first I didn't want to be with you guys. Why not? Yes, sir. I said, Explain I, that. I, I said, think, cause you God don't damn, the two of them aren't as big as I am, for Christ's sake. Uh -huh. And I weighed 265 or 70 or whatever it was, and I thought I was pretty well built and all that bullshit. 
and you two little bastards. I said, who the fuck are they? But when the people watched you or you got the guys got in the ring, I said, those fucking goddamn people are going crazy over those two fucking kids. <laughs> those two so fun. I said, well, now we gotta we gotta adjust my thinking a little bit and do something that's going to make them look better than they are. And that's what we tried to do. And, and I thought we did a pretty good job. And I thought you did a damn good job. Well, thank you, sir. But, you know, and plus, but it's, now I've skipped over that. And that don't get me any more money either. Well, we have a little run. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and we were booking. I mean, not, not even in Atlanta, but uh, even Atlanta. Put these together like Atlanta. Then when you went to Crockett's together, what was your most successful town? What was the greatest town that you wanted to work? The one you made more money? What do you think? Well, everybody... there's no such thing as that because I made money in Atlanta. I made money in Charlotte. Okay. And uh, there, all you got to do is look at the towns. Uh, Charlotte would be better than, well, would be big. Richmond would be big. Uh, well, they were all pretty yeah, good sized towns. Fork, Hampton, all of them up huh? there. You had North Fork. Uh, North Fork. Oh, yeah, Richmond, yeah, okay. Hampton, well, that was, a, that was a tough town. That was a tough Which town to dominate. Richmond was better. Okay. And uh, Roanoke was better. And, and Charlotte. Uh, in Atlanta, well, you only had a few towns to run. You had Atlanta, uh, Columbus, Columbia, Columbus, what was it? Columbus. Was it Columbus, Columbus, Georgia? Yeah, whatever yeah. it is. You had Columbia, South Carolina, Columbus. Yeah, yeah, Georgia. okay. But. Atlanta, well, I can tell you a bullshit story. <laughs> well, I want to hear the truth. In, in Atlanta, <laughs> I had a call from uh, Vince McMahon, uh -huh. senior. And he said, we just drew 16,000 people at the Madison Square Garden. I said, God damn, that's good. When are you going to go back? Oh, we'll go back in about four or five weeks. I said, well, we just drew 16,000 people in Atlanta. And we're going back next week. And we'll draw another 16,000 people. You did. And we're going back the week after that, and we're going to draw another 16,000 people. He hung up the phone. Oh, before he hung up the phone, I says, there's one big difference between Atlanta and, and, and New York. I said, New York, New York got about 8 million people. Atlanta's got 600,000. Or less, uh, and we're drawing money, we're drawing the same amount of people that you're drawing in New York. I said a bunch of those people in, in, in New York must have just think they were going to the bathroom, and you counted them as people that bought tickets. Well, he got mad at me and he hung up the phone. The point that I'm trying to make, if I'm trying to make one, is that we drew money in Atlanta, and the easiest way to explain it is that Barnett. Fired everybody that ever had that job. Name him. I don't give a shit. Name somebody. He fired him after a while. He fired yes. him. The only guy he never fired was me. I quit two times on him. And he called me every time. He says, oh, Oli, are you ready to come back? Okay. And the one thing that he knew would, would work for me, he said, there's one thing I know you like better than anything else. Money. And so he was giving me I was getting five thousand dollars a week. Well, figured out who the hell wouldn't work for five thousand dollars a week. I did. And then what year was this only? Well, all of them from 1970, no, 19, uh, 1980. You know, that's that is a lot of money compared. It's a to lot of that. money now. It's a lot of money. Yes, today. it is. But, but for the time that it was. Now you know, well, and we're talking about this, and we're talking about Jim Part, uh, Jim Barnett, and in the territory. Well, what, what happened here? What happened? I mean, what do you mean? What happened? I mean, it, you know, when. Well, he just when, had me book it, that's all. What do you mean? No, no. After you got through booking, because, you know, Jim Barnett got rid of the territory. That's when the Crockett's come in. No, no, no. I, which I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. What happened around the Rathbun area? Well, it's hard to say because the guy that was taking over was Vince McMahon. Vince yes. McMahon Jr. Uh -huh. And me. I was a dumb shit and I didn't realize what the hell was going on. He had the one thing that would help him make money and that was a pay-per-view channel. Yes. I didn't know nothing about pay-per-view. I had no idea what that was. 
So somebody said, he's got pay-per-view. I said, what the fuck is that? I don't know. But pay-per-view people would put the TV program on the TV once a month, and they would draw a million or two million people. Okay, what are they paying for that pay-per-view? $40? Okay, 40 times a million? $40 million? $2 million? $80 million? When Vince McMahon offered me more money than I ever believed possible, I told him to go fuck himself. I thought he was full of shit. He okay. said, he came back, he came to see me a couple times. He came down the next week and he said, listen, I don't care what you think about me, I don't give a damn. But you'll make more money with me than you ever than you ever believed possible. I said, go fuck yourself. He came down a couple weeks later and he brought his wife, Linda. He said, Ollie, I'd like you to meet my wife, Linda. I said, fuck her and fuck you. <laughs> All right. And he said, you'll never wrestle again. And guess what? I never wrestled again. I didn't know that he was taking over the whole damn world because of that pay-per-view. Yes, he sure did. But he was offering me all that money, and I thought, how's he going to do it? I was too damn dumb to realize, like I just got through saying, $40 a deal and there's 2 million people watching, that's $80 million. Could he afford to give me a million dollars? Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. And he took the one guy that I sent up there and made a lot of money with him. That was Hulk Hogan. Sure did. I called him Sterling Golden, and he wasn't worth a shit. But... On that pay-per-view, it didn't make any difference how good you were, yeah. because you were on that pay-per-view, and that's what that's what worked. Okay, now when we're going to go back over here to Crockett. Now, you know, we had a great run. I had a great run with you. You had a great run. A lot of people did, but then it got to the the era where uh, you know Crockett went to TBS. He got that, and all of a sudden the bottom just what was the downfall? You know, I've left by the end. And, and really understand me, I was young in the business. I, well, I still knew how to, but I didn't really understand until I got older about our business. But what, did, what was your opinion? What, what happened? What well, happened in WA? Well, it depends on what you're talking about. If you're talking about 1980s, then you're talking about Vince McMahon. That's well, what. No, I don't know. I'm talking about when Dusty was the booker there. And, you know, it, it, it Dusty failed. couldn't book his way out of anything. Okay. Good. Dusty bullshitted everybody. And made you him know, believe it, that he was doing something. It's when, it's but when he WCW put it in the toilet. Took over in WA. I got a hold of. Okay. I, I got a hold of. Uh, I think it was David Crockett, and I said, "You do whatever you want to do, but if you keep on doing what Dusty wants, you ain't never going to make a dime." They lost money with Dusty booking. Yes. But Dusty kept on telling them how smart everybody was, including Jimmy. Jimmy bought the goddamn plane for Dusty to fly around in. Yes. Well, Jimmy should have uh, stick that plane up your ass and drive your car around like everybody else does. But Jimmy just fell for Dusty for whatever reason. Dusty was blowing smoke up Jimmy's ass. And David was the one guy that realized that they're going broke. Yes. And I said, well, the reason you're going broke is because Dusty's booking the damn territory. And Dusty don't know shit about anything. Dusty took stuff, programs that I was doing in Atlanta, and he tried to put those in, in, in Charlotte. But once again, he didn't know what the fuck he was doing. Dusty was a, Jim Barnett loved, loved Dusty Rhodes. Dusty Rhodes came from Florida. Where did Jim Barnett own territory? He owned part of the territory in Florida. Yes. Eddie Graham, Jim Barnett, and the Fullers, and who the hell ever. So they all went along with Dusty Rhodes. They were too damn dumb to realize that w, Dusty Rhodes didn't know shit about anything. And he didn't know. But he had the big job up there in, in, in Charlotte. And for whatever reason, Jimmy thought he knew what the fuck, or Dusty knew what the hell he was doing. And Dusty did. That's all there was to it. That's great. You know, I, I, I absolutely love my job. I, but now I'm going to ask you something here, and especially when Time Warner took over. You know, when it comes to WCW, and, and I know you were around at the time, uh, give me an outtake of Jim Hurd. Jim Hurd. You remember Jim Hurd? He was the guy that was uh, that took over Time Warner's. He was in the office. That you know, he brought the. Oh, oh, oh! You know oh, what I'm talking. Mean, 
Me and WTC, the, 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 the Ted Turner station. Yes. Well, well he was an asshole. Okay, you get, come on, you got to fill me in. Well, me, no, me no, and everybody no, else no, 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 no. I did some stuff that he didn't like, and I didn't give a fuck. Well, I know that. Yeah, and, <laughs> I he, was there, I and, he, and, he, and he told me to do this or do that, and, and I just said, fuck it, I went downstairs and did something else. Okay. No, I mean, I didn't do what he said. Okay. Yeah, you I know, did I, mean, I, 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 you I know, mean, when you mentioned things, your, he your, just, he was just a, he was a dumbass that didn't know his ass from a hole in the ground. Here. <laughs> I think he got fired after that. Oh, yes, he did. He, yeah, well, I think he lost he, his job. Because well, he, he had, didn't know shit about anything. Well, he got fired, but gosh, I mean, he was on a contract there for all this money, and, uh, and you couldn't Ooh, believe Jim Hurd? Yes. You know, remember, the first thing you did was bring a tag team in called the Ding Dongs from Bellsville. And do you remember that? No. Yes, it was absolutely Well, I don't know how he did that without horrible. me knowing it because he yeah. couldn't have done it that, that was way. That was absolutely must have been horrible. That, must have been and, uh, after I was gone, but <laughs> Jim Hurd was an idiot. Uh, so uh, now this is put together in, in your outtake. What about the corporate? In our business, did corporate destroy our business? The corp, you know, the corporate business like Vince McMahon, or did it help our business in any way that you want to look at it? I mean, well, Vince McMahon is making a lot of money right now. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Look at WWE. But is that now. good or bad? It's good for him. And it's good for people that are working for him. Mm -hmm. But when's the last time they had a match in Atlanta? How many years ago? That's right. Okay. So name any other big town and tell me how many times they had a match. They haven't. That's the whole problem. Now, is it a problem for Vince McMahon? No, he don't give a shit. But it's a problem for people who want to make money in Atlanta. Or we used to make money in Atlanta, Augusta, Macon, and, and the towns here in, in, in Georgia. They don't make any money anymore. So the guys that at one time worked, well, just stop and think about it. At one time, how many promoters were there in this country? Oh gosh, I mean territory. Oh, bunch of them. Yes, everywhere. Yeah. Even even yeah. different sides of the states had different. Well, promoters. yeah, Minnesota was burned down yet. Yes. Uh, anyway, there was three promoters in California. There was four or five promoters in Texas. You know. Now there's only one Tennessee, promoter in the whole yeah, damn world. You had Jerry Jarrett, Nick Goulas, and the Fullers, right in one state. They're just in between. So um, now you got one guy that's running the whole damn thing, and that's Vince McMahon. And if I would have been smart and just shut my fucking mouth up, which I couldn't do, I would have worked for Vince McMahon. He told me you'll make millions of dollars. I didn't believe it. I thought he was full of shit. I told him that. I told his wife yes. that. I told his wife to go fuck her, too. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when he got mad at me. Oh, okay. You know, I read the list. Well, the guy that was going to goddamn fix me up with Vince McMahon was... Who's the big black guy? Okay, say one. Who's the big black guy? Four. Vince. Wrestler. Yeah, no, he wrestled. Abdullah. He was a no, no, okay. big black guy. Tony Seven Ellis. foot tall. Seven foot tall, not Ernie Ladd. Who? Ernie Ladd. Ernie Ladd. Yes. Okay. He said, "I'll get you to McMahon." He said, "Don't uh, worry, I'll call up McMahon and I'll you'll have a job there next week." Yeah. Uh, he hung up the phone. He says, "I guess not. I guess not going to get that job after all." Okay, and you know, I, I, I'm reading a list off here. Sometimes I forget things, and I'm just trying to get out of here. Uh, and, and we was talking earlier that you made a, a lot of money, especially for the time, uh, for Jim Barnett. You know, we, yeah. we made that much money. Two hundred fifty thousand. You know, and okay, but it's like me. I mean, I've been in territories. I understand where you, where you barely made anything. What was the worst, worst, worst guy you worked for? Worst payoff guys. That you ever worked for? I only worked for two people. One was Ben Bar Jim Barnett, and the other was Jim Crockett. Okay, you're smart. I mean, I, I never, I, I had the opportunity to work for Nick Goulas and, and Roller Welch. And I would and never work for Nick Goulas. I don't give a shit. Somebody told me Nick whoops your ass. Is that Ooh. right? <laughs> I'm just messing with you. <laughs> uh, no, and, uh, I only I wrestled in uh, Minnesota, and then I wrestled uh, in in, in uh, Canada for Stu Hart. And from there I came down to Carolinas. I wrestled in the Carolinas, then I wrestled in Crockett for Georgia, and then never went, I never wrestled anywhere else. Okay. I made enough money and I stayed right where I was. Okay. It, it, and money in Charlotte was, <laughs> the money in Atlanta was better than the money you. in Charlotte. I love you, you mean a honorary son of a bitch, but that's great. But you understand me, uh, 
It's hard. Now, do, do you watch wrestling now? Do, I mean, no. you, had, you had the opportunity to watch. When's the last time you watched any, like WC, or WWE? When is the last time, Ali? Have you 20 watched years ago. Has it been that long? Oh, yeah, I don't watch it. I don't give a shit about it. Well, I, I was just wanting to know. There's nothing that. that makes me excited about wrestling anymore. Well, I, never, I, I can understand. The only time I rushed wrestling was when I was doing the wrestling and the guys that were working for me, I wanted to see how they did. I wanted to see how it looked when it was on TV. If they were the shits, they were the shits. Uh, if they were good, I told them they were good. If they needed change, they, they either changed or they got fired. Define this for me. What is the shit? What is somebody that's the drizzly, the drizzly shit? Who are they? What kind of person? If a guy didn't listen to me and didn't pay attention, okay. okay. So, well, no, you know. Okay. I the got only you. guys that did what they wanted to do, pretty much, uh -huh. and I think I'm pretty honest about it, was you, was you and, and your partner. Uh, I didn't have to tell you any goddamn thing. I don't. I don't think. I just did what I wanted to do, and you did what you had to do. You had to do, come back and all that crap. Yes. Yeah, sure. But for the most part, I had to give everybody the idea of a finish and how to do the finish, and make sure they just keep on wrestling and don't throw a bunch of bullshit punches and don't be uh, squeezing somebody's balls or his eyes or something like that. Okay. And uh, and 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 everybody. You know, pretty much. If they didn't, if they didn't. It was really easy like this. If they didn't do what I told them to do, it was real simple. Okay, you're, that's you're kind fired. Of, that's okay. All. When you was booking, you know, you're not working anymore. Okay, and when you was booking uh, for the Carolinas, I mean, how did how did you and Flair get along? What was your what's your opinion on Rick Flair? Rick Flair's an asshole. Okay. That's, that's Rick Flair at first I thought was an okay guy, but he only knew one match. He never ever got in the ring and had a different match. It was always the same damn shitty match. Who made him world champion? I did. Okay. I called Eddie Graham and I said, is there any chance we can make it, uh, Ric Flair world champion? He said, yeah, Jack is getting tired of that shit. So I think they switched it to Dusty and then Dusty came up to Atlanta or to uh, Charlotte or where the hell ever and Ric Flair beat him. The reason I wanted Ric Flair to be world champion was because I was booking in Charlotte and I didn't want that fucking kid around. So as a world champion, he would wrestle in, in Charlotte maybe one day out of the year. The rest of the time he'd be wrestling in wherever, but he wouldn't be in Charlotte anymore. And that, I just want to get rid of him. I thought he was such a horrible, wrestler that being the world champion he could have that same match all over the world and nobody would know it was the same match say so what's on your mind buddy i love well it. go ahead yeah okay he, but but he was a shit and so i liked him for a while because Bern Gagne broke him in and you and i took him as a brother to begin with but we both realized we made a mistake and Ric Flair was the absolute shits. And if you try to get a match out of him, it'll be the same fucking thing that he did 20 years ago. He'll never, he'll never change. He doesn't know how to change. He doesn't know how to wrestle. That's the best thing for him. He don't know. He thinks he's, a, he, he thinks he's really something super. Right. And who gives a fuck? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's good. Well, I, 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 worked out, I worked out with him in a gym one time. And I got his arm, and I, said, I was going to break his arm for him. I was going to show you how to, how to wrestle. Boy, he just got old. He didn't, he didn't know what to do. Okay. And he then, got to think he was a pretty tough kid. He was fair, but he wasn't, he wasn't that good. He wasn't that good at any goddamn thing that he did. But he had the, he had the look that was good. And his interviews were <laughs> full of shit. Could he beat Danny Hodge? No. <laughs> okay. I don't know if anybody could beat Danny Hodge. I'm <laughs> just kidding with you. And there was, but uh, in, in back then, you know, you had a lot of great talent. You know, I because I did one thing. I did. I just I studied my, the history of professional wrestling. Mean, you know, back then you had Black Jack Mulligan. You had a uh, you know uh, superstar. You, know, you, you had uh, all those guys. Is it, was any favorite one back then that you loved to work with, or one that, favorite well, one that you drew a lot more money? You with you you you, you got you got to stop and think and ask yourself this question: okay. Who brought those guys in there? Uh, Mr. Anderson did. 
That's it. Okay, well, who's your favorite? I brought who I wanted in. I brought, and if they didn't work out, I got them fired them. That's all. Simple as that. Okay. The people that I had in Atlanta and the people that I had in Charlotte, if I didn't like them, I just fired them and got rid of them. That's all. And I brought somebody else in. So the guys that were there, for the most part, were guys that I brought in the goddamn place. The guys who were there that I already liked, okay, fine. Accidentally, maybe they had somebody that was good. I, you, know, you don't know. But from my point of view, I brought in who I wanted to bring in, and if Jimmy Crockett didn't like it, I didn't give a fuck. If David Crockett didn't like it, who gave a shit? The point that I was trying to make was I'll make money. And Barnett brought in a lot of guys, but he kept me the longest. He never fired me. I quit a couple times on him. But he always gave me more money, and that's what I liked. And so when it came to making bookings and shit like that, at first, he was all worried about it. He had to see the bookings. Uh -huh. And I would make them, and I'd give them to Gene, and Gene would go down to the office and give them to Barnett. And Barnett thought that Gene did it. And one time when he went to some meeting with a bunch of higher-ups, Gene sat out in the hallway. He never, never came in the room to where the meeting was. So he said, something's, something's wrong here. And I said, yeah, that's because Gene don't know nothing either. Gene is the one that gets a shit from me. No, and he gives it to you. Okay. And, and, and who was the kid that worked for Barnett? I forgot. What was his name, Marcia? The, the office boy that worked for Barnett? Doug Smith. Who? Doug Smith. Smith? Yeah, Doug Smith? Doug Smith, yeah. Yeah, maybe it was. Uh, uh, Doug, whatever his name was. Okay. Anyway, he was, a, he was a stooge for Christ's sake. But he was bringing the wrong information. Well, anyway... I told Barnett, I said, I'm doing it. I'm not coming in the office because I don't want to come in the office. I don't want to come in the office and just sit on my ass. I want to, I'm at home and I do the booking and I figure out what I want to do. And when I get to the matches that night, yeah. I go over with everybody and make sure they do exactly what I want to do. That's all. And that's what, what do you, but when you started booking for Jim Barnett, when you first started, did he have TBS at that time, Nationwide TV? Yeah. He did. He, uh, he had oh, it the yeah. whole time. He was there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. The only TV, the only show that was good on the damn TV was wrestling. Ted yes. Turner said the only one that did, the only one he was making money with was wrestling. Yeah, it's the highest that's why we were on, had. That's why we were on okay. like six times a week. Okay, a lot of these questions here I was going to ask you, but, you know, you did, did you never not ever work like Kansas City for Bob Geigel or uh, any of those territories out there? I never worked anywhere else. Just Atlanta and North Carolina. The only place, the only thing, the only place that I, I went to Omaha. With a promoter, I forgot his goddamn name now. Because Vern sent me down there. Okay. And they made me the champion. And I wrestled guys from Kansas City. Can't remember their names anymore. Uh, Did you ever know Bulldog Bob Brown? Yes. He was Kansas City, wasn't he? Yes, he sure was. Yeah, yeah. He came up to do a little deal up there in Omaha. Okay. Uh, and I saw him. I didn't wrestle him. I was in the main events. Okay, I got you. Yeah. I was a champion. <laughs> there was another guy down there who was a good amateur wrestler uh, from Kansas City. I forgot what his name was. Yeah, you know, it's a lot of guys I know that used to hang it. I mean, like a Buzz Sawyer. Buzz Sawyer, he was, was he a good amateur wrestler or was he, did he make oh, you a little he, money? Well, yeah, yeah. He was a pretty fair amateur wrestler, supposedly. Okay. Nobody liked him except me. And they got mad at me when I booked him all around. Briscoe's really got pissed at me. But Buzz was the kind of kid that did what I told him to do and did a pretty good job at it. Okay. And he drew a few people, you know. Uh, was he the worst? Was he the best? No. Well, at least he listened to what I said. Okay. And that's well, what I went by. You were just saying that the Briscoes didn't... Did, the Briscoes... Were, were you in the, the territory? Bri they worked for you? Or did, did you work for them? Or No, they, they worked for me, for Christ's sake. Okay. They thought they were working for themselves. They thought they were superstars. They weren't. When I put them in the match one time, I put all kinds of crap in that damn match. At the Omni. And we didn't sell it out. Okay. They thought it was a great house. 
It was a great house, but it didn't sell out. And that's what I went by. And the two of them, Jack and Jerry both, they had a little problem between the two of them. They thought they could beat the shit out of everybody. Okay. And they were going to beat the shit out of me. I said, yeah. I said, well, I don't know who's going to do what, but I'll tell you this. One of you is going to lose an eye. <laughs> Loosen up. <laughs> well, okay. No, as I told him. Oh, God, I mean, this they, really happened. What this happened at Atlanta? Uh, or? It first happened, I think, in Florida. Okay. Because Jack was so down there. I mean, so you worked for Eddie Graham, right? Yeah. Okay. I worked for Eddie Graham in 1970, I think it was. Okay. In 1970. I quit the damn business with Barnett. And I came down to Eddie Graham. And Eddie Graham, I guess, liked me. And Jack and Jerry were down there. And they thought they were superstars. They weren't. Jerry wasn't worth a shit as far as I was concerned. And Jack was a good wrestler, I don't argue that. But wasn't drawing any money. Okay. And they both thought they were outstanding. So I didn't give a fuck. Uh, I just told them what I wanted to do, whatever reason it was. And they're both going to kick the shit out of me. And I just told you, I says, do what you want to do. Did, did, oh, I wait, said, but did, I'm going to take did, one of your eyeballs out. Oh, they, they told you that. It wasn't part yeah, that, they're right there. The part that you figured out, but you, they told no, you. No, 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 they came up and told me. Okay. They were good at doing it together. That was the problem. That's what they did with Ernie Ladd. The two of them tried to beat the shit out of Ernie Ladd. Okay, now. But they see, fucked up and Ernie Ladd beat the shit I, out of I'm from the old school, all these fans, and I heard a thousand things in my lifetime. But let's get the truth out here. Give me the story about Ernie Ladd and the Briscoe. What really happened? The best I know is that Ernie Ladd was sitting in the car, and the two Briscoes were going to kick the shit out of him. How it happened or how they talked about it, I don't remember anymore. But Ernie Ladd said, well, wait, wait, wait just a minute. I got, I got some, something to drink there in the a, in a, in a trunk. And of course, they both liked that idea because they both were getting drunk all the time or drinking or whatever it might be. Or it might not have been drinking, it might have been uh, some weed or some goddamn okay. shit. And he went into the trunk and he pulled out the tire iron. Okay, no, 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 And they no. both come after him and he knocked them both on the goddamn head. And you know, Jack, Jack was on his legs and then Jerry was knocked him away. But the point was that Ernie Ladd beat the shit out of both of them. And they turned the story around saying that Ernie Ladd attacked him with a tire iron and all that bullshit okay. for no reason at all. And the story got all fucked up. But the two of them, I say the two of them told me they were going to kick the shit out of me. Uh, I said, good, I'll get one of you in the eyeballs. <laughs> okay, now, now I got you. Now before I go into this next question, because I, and understand me, because I, were, I remember this like it was yesterday. And at first you thought it was a rib, and I thought it was a rib too. Uh, Atlanta TV, because I'm gonna ask you about, uh, here in a minute. I don't know if you remember this, I had a job guy come on TV. And, and, our, and, and a matter of fact, if you guys can find this on tape and put this in when I'm saying, uh, what I'm talking about, it's on TBS. Uh, Arn Anderson and Ric Flair were doing the commentary and the kid coming to ring and you, and you thought Arn never set this guy up. And this guy kept trying to leg dive you, trying to hit you. Do you remember this? And you started headbutting him, and I'm watching this, watching this match right here. And you looked at Arn, and it's right on TV too. You go, "Is this a rib?" And he said, "No, but you beat the shit out of this guy on TV." But he deserved it. Well, you and know, the, the, do you remember what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, because that guy I talk about him all the time. Yes. That guy, I broke his, uh, knocked four or five of his teeth out. Yes, you did. I broke his nose. It was horrifying. I watched it live. I was right there beside you when you come back through the well, door. Well, you know, people yes. people were looking at the damn thing. Ted Turner called me in his office, and he says, you beat the hell out of that guy. I said, yeah. He said, uh, we had to take him to the hospital. I said, yeah. I said, what do you want me to do? He says, well, we want you to have real wrestling. I said, well, that's what you got, and I got up and I walked out. Yes. That was it. But the guy was 
trying to kick the shit out of me. And at first I didn't know what the hell was going on. And then I realized that he was trying to hurt me. And I just said, well, fuck that. And I goddamn beat the shit out of him. And I yeah, kicked I him there. in the goddamn face and knocked his teeth out, <laughs> yeah. broke his nose and beat him I up. Was, I was right there and he yeah, yeah. And I said, I, you know, what, you know. And speaking of that, this is what See, the whole thing is, you can do what you want to do with me. And if you can beat me, okay. But there's only one guy that I know that for sure could beat me. And that, that was, was Ricky, Morton. Ricky Morton, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, that, one, that one too. What, me? No, no. Oh, no. God damn. But, you know, okay, and, and speaking of that, because we're talking about this happening, give me something. What What, what is one of the best fights you've seen? Because guys don't understand. You know, the, the fans out there, even though, you know, you think everybody thinks they know everything about our business and really don't know shit. But, you know, what happens in the back, tell me. Give me a good fight you seen in the, in the dressing room, sir. Without without you beating the shit out of somebody, you know, somebody you know, else. You know, you know. To be honest with you, there were very few fights in the dressing room because I didn't want that. Number okay, one. Okay, I got you. Number two, you do what I tell you to do. You do what I tell you to do. There's okay. no reason to fight. Okay. The only person you want to fight is me. I got you. You know. So I told uh, wrestling number two. He used to get pissed at me every now and then. I said, well, you got the same opportunity that anybody else does. Kick the shit out of me if you want, uh -huh. if you can. And if you can't, then you do what I tell you to do. Oh, yeah. And he just go back now, and do what he was told to do. Well, we talk about Russell, too. Didn't him and the, the other mask guy from Mississippi Frank? Oh, Tim, Tim Woods. Yeah, the, 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 oh, no. It was another one. They had a little heat with each other and got in a fight. Uh, Wasn't he, Tim Woods? Tim Woods was wrestling number one. Joe Powell. Who? Joe Powell. I don't, what, what, Joe Powell, I know, I think this guy was from over Mississippi. He was a tough guy, good fighter with his fist. And him and Johnny Walker got in a fight in the dressing room. I, I can't remember his name. Uh, something about he flicked something to hit Johnny Walker in the eye. I think his name was Frank. Uh, I don't know, do you ever know Frank Hickey? One of the old timer Yeah, 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 yeah. Did yeah, you know yeah. Frank? You have any yeah, stories? Yeah, he's about five thousand years old. Yes, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he, he worked for Crockett. Yes, he sure did. He uh, remember he did this the spaceman gimmick. Do you remember that? That was years ago. When well, like I say, he was he worked in the first match wherever, uh -huh. if he worked at all. Yes. And so he was just the guy that was just passing through. That's yeah. Well, okay. Crockett had a lot of guys that worked for him. And he used them once in a while, and then, then he wouldn't use them anymore. Uh, and there was a couple guys up there. Uh, and, the, and to me, they were all the shits. Yeah. They used uh, Brute Bernard. Okay. Remember him? And his partner was... Uh, well, Brute Bernard was no big deal, but he would do whatever Crockett wanted to do. So that's why he worked for Crockett all the time. Okay. Uh, so anyway, Crockett had a different way of doing things. To me, he never knew what a good match was. He would go by the people. If the people liked you, that was good. Oops. If the people hated you, that was okay. But he himself had no idea what the fuck was going on. Okay. Well, I don't, I, no, I don't, no, he... And Jimmy was just about the same. He thought he knew everything about everything, but he didn't know shit about anything. And so, it, and, and Jim Crockett told me, he came to Florida to get me one time. I was in, I was running in Florida in 1970. And he, and he flew down to Florida, talked to Eddie Graham, and he got a hold of me and says, when are you coming home? I said, what do you mean? He says, well, when are you coming back to Charlotte? I said, uh, is there a spot for me? He said, yeah, yeah. He liked me and Gene when we wrestled. He thought that was good wrestling. Uh -huh. and, and I'm assuming it was. Uh, so we came back, I came back, and Gene and I, Gene was with Art Nelson. 
Okay, I remember Art. Sure and did. that was the worst goddamn tag team in the world. <laughs> All right. Art Nelson was the <laughs> absolute shit. Art Nelson had been wrestling for 50 fucking years, for Christ's sake. And he just did the same thing. It's always the same thing. Was it sort of like Flair, the same match? Right? Yeah, exactly, exactly, okay. same match. And he was the shits. So Gene wasn't making any money. Art Nelson wasn't making any money. And Crockett wasn't making any money. So Crockett said, when are you coming home? Okay. And I says, well, uh, you got Gene with Art Nelson already. Oh, God, no. Who's the worst booker you ever worked for? Well, I didn't work for any bookers, basically. I worked for the uh, booker in Charlotte. Uh -huh. And that was, who was that? Who was that at the time? Was it Sandy Scott? Not Sandy, but George Scott. No, 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 no. Uh, George Scott was afterwards. I'm, st I'm still trying to think of the guy that married Frances. And, uh, and I still can't think of it. You was asking me a while ago. Oh, God. And I'm name? still trying to think of that name. And I know it just as well as anybody. Well, anyway, and, uh, the, the whole thing was George Scott came in the book. Oh, it was, it was Weaver. Uh, Becker and Weaver. Becker and Weaver were the bookers. Becker, George Becker. George Becker. It sure was. That's exactly. He was the absolute shit. Yes. But Crockett wasn't afraid of him, so that was okay. George Becker was the absolute shit. And what, Johnny Weaver was just as bad. And the two of them together, Becker didn't Are you talking about, now, jo George Becker, Johnny Weaver, are you talking about booking, or are you talking about booking? Working, okay. working the other shits, too. What? But he made them the champions. Okay, I got you. And goddamn George Becker was only five foot two and weighed 100 pounds. Oh, he's about like the size of Ricky Morton, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, could be. <laughs> Might have been. I got you. Now tell me about when the Road Warriors come on. You first brought them in to TBS. Were they hard to handle? I mean, was, did you get No, 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 no. I went to the goddamn movie, The Road Warriors. Uh -huh. And I says, oh, and I thought about that. And I says, so I called up to Minnesota, talked to, uh, who was their manager? Are you the one that gave them the Paul Allen? Yeah. Uh -huh. Are you I the said, one that gave them their gimmick? The yeah. Warriors? Are you? Okay. Fit me in, man. What See, do you think inquire minds don't. I just want to know. I, mean, I was working for, I was just a young kid that time out in San Antonio, Texas for, for Joe Blanchard. I went down and, to uh, what the guy's name was. Uh, he worked, he did jobs on the TV for Turner Ganya. I forgot his name now. But anyway. I said, I'm looking for two goddamn kids that look pretty goddamn tough to wrestle, and I want them to be the road warriors. And they came up with uh, the two guys. Joe and Mike. Yeah. yeah. They were did, both good looking did you, kids. Did you put Paul Ellering with them? Or did, yeah, did, yeah, did yeah. Paul know them? Well, I was just going to fire, I was just gonna fire Paul Ellering. Okay. And I, I, I said, listen. I'm not going to fire you. I'm going to put you to, uh, in with a, with two kids as road warriors. Okay. He didn't know nothing about nothing. He said, yeah, okay. <laughs> and the road warriors didn't know nothing about nothing. But I told him how to wrestle. I told him, well, same thing I told Abdullah. Don't beat the shit out of Tommy Rich. But I want you to beat the guys in, say, five, ten minutes. And they did. And they looked so doggone good that the people went crazy over the road warriors. And later on, I had them for about half a year, maybe three quarters of a year. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with them anymore. And they were already trying to figure out how to get out because one of them wanted to go back to Minnesota. And I forgot his goddamn name now. What was it two names? Mike, Hulk, an animal, but there's Joe and Mike. Yeah, yeah, you well, know, Joe, Joe, Joe. And, yeah. yeah, Joe, I think. Okay. Well, anyway, they had kind of run out of everything, and they were gonna leave, and they were gonna be stars up in Minnesota. And next thing I know, they already went to Minnesota. Yeah, they went back to Bourbon. Sure yeah. did. Yeah. And Joe or Mike or whichever his name was wanted to be stars in Minnesota. Larry Hanimi 
Lars Anderson? Yes. He made a lot of money down in Carolinas, but he wanted to go back to Minnesota to be a star in Minnesota. I didn't go with a fuck if I ever went to Minnesota. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, well, I don't know what the hell they were thinking. <laughs> do I want to make money or do I want to go back to Minnesota? Okay. Well, I wrestled for Vern and yeah, I made good money, but I didn't make as much money as I wanted to make. So I didn't give a fuck if I ever went back to Minnesota. And I never went back to Minnesota. But they wanted to go back. And Lars, I visited him up at his house. He and I went to school together. Yeah, College, you I should say. Earlier. Yeah. Now, and, did you get along with Vern? Did, did you ever? Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, did you do any business with him? Or did you ever book for Vern? Or? No, 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 I never booked for him. I was going to book for him uh, later on, 1972 or whatever it was. But Vern was like everybody else. He had a thousand guys doing the booking. Okay. <laughs> See, me, I just did it by myself. If you want to tell me something about it, I'll, I'll talk to you later on. But right now I'm booking, and, that's, and I, I did work it out. But Vern was like so many guys, like Bill Watts. He had 10 people sitting there while they were, they were doing the booking. Okay. Why? Because you're not smart enough to do it yourself? And I would say shit like that. I just, I got up and I, when, I, when Vern had the bunch of people there, I said, Vern, you don't need me. You got all you goddamn can use right now. <laughs> and now let me ask you, did, did you get along with Bill Watts? Did I you did. like Bill Watts is what I'm trying to say. Well, yes and no. Bill Watts was the same. He had a million people that he was booking with. Yes. He couldn't do it himself. That's all the thing. It just taught me he didn't know it. He didn't know how to do it himself. And he was he was gonna beat the shit out of me in Chicago. He beat the shit out of you, or he was gonna beat the shit out of me. Bill Watts was. Yeah. Okay. Now what happened? Did he beat the shit out of you? No, I was gonna kick the shit out of him. <laughs> huh? Well, he was he was good. It beating the shit out of somebody. But when it came right down to beating the shit out of me, somebody said, and it was a guy that was booking uh, Tennessee. Who was the booker in Tennessee? The Lawler, Jerry Jarrett. Uh, Jerry Jarrett, maybe. Yes. One of them said to Bill Watts before he did, beat the shit out of me, he says, that only can wrestle too. <laughs> okay. And Bill Watts decided just to, to wait. Did he? Okay, I just wanted to know. And he never, he never beat the shit out of me. That, that's good, man. But I mean, you know, there's a lot of guys that wanted to beat the shit out of me. And a lot of guys that tried and decided that they didn't want to later on. And for me, I didn't give a shit. Danny Hodge beat the crap out of me, no shit about it. I'll tell that to anybody, I'm not embarrassed about it. Okay. But uh, ain't everybody like Danny Hodge. Well, I, I understand. So, so, if you think you're going to beat the shit out of me, good luck. That's great. You know, and, and I want to ask you here in a minute, and before I do this, Ray, because, uh, you know, like you know, a lot of different people in our business, and we had a lot of uh, big stars, and, and, I, and to me, I took it as a compliment, and even to myself, uh, Steve Austin, Stone Cold Steve Austin, he has a, a TV show, a radio show that comes on. As a matter of fact, it gets a lot of good ratings. And one thing that I can say about that, and that, you know, he, he called me the other day, but out of the blue, but I'm not getting that, but he was, they always talk, he, they asked him questions. Uh, they asked him one time, what was the best match that you ever see? He said, oh, I made that right off the bat. And I'm not saying it, it was my best match too. He said it was the Rock and Roll Express versus the Andersons uh, at Starcade in a cage, I don't know if you remember, that was years ago, it was. I've worked with a lot of people, and, and I'm, it's not because you're sitting here, it was just, just because that night, that angle, everything worked. Everything went to the point, it's, it's one of the best, and I, t I tell a lot of guys, so man, if you ever wanna watch, good, just sit down and watch this match, the way you told a story, the way, and that was my favorite match, and I'm serious, of the world. But I wanna ask you, can you remember, what is your favorite match you ever had, Ali? No, 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 there's no, no such thing. Drawing. There's no, no, there's such, no thing. such thing. 
Okay, I just didn't know. No, I mean, yeah, no favorite I, worker, I, nothing. Listen, who'd you, who'd you listen to when you were in that match? I listened to you. There they, you go. I didn't have a damn choice. Okay. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, any, it was the way you any, were. Any, you know? any match that I was in, and I say all I ask you to do is I'll let you know when you got to sell. If you're selling too much, I'll tell you you're selling too much. And then I'll tell you to come back. And if you know how to come back, that's all there is to it. I don't have to say much more. Well, I knew that. If you're, I always got this from you. I, look here. <laughs> you'd squeeze me right there. Every time. Yeah, right that's, down. that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't have to do nothing. All you did was squeeze me right here, and I knew you would go back down. But, uh, you know, I, I know that. I mean, just, I know that you was a booker, and I know that you had great. But there's no one, not one guy that you just love, absolutely love working with. No, because it's uh, not. they were all, I mean, I hated working with Mohan McDaniel. With who? Wahoo McDaniel. <laughs> he drove me fucking crazy. Okay. But the way we did it, we made money with the son of a bitch. Wahoo and Paul Jones, we made money. Wahoo later on by himself, yeah, sometimes made a little bit of money. But he didn't do as good as he did with me. And I think he didn't do as good as he did with me because I told him what to fucking do all the goddamn time. Okay. I told him before we got in the ring and then after we got in the ring, it's like this, come on back. Okay, I got you. And don't drop dead and goddamn it, fight me. And as long as the guy could fight me, what, then I'll, I'll, not, I'll let you know to sell. No. And that's the same thing, you know. I'll hit you in the goddamn mouth of you. <laughs> but I'll get you to sell. <laughs> so it ain't, ain't no whole lot of talking that you got to do. And if the guy, guy fucks it up, I let him know he fucked it up. That's all. Well, and, well, I'm, well I'm a first hand at knowing that. You know, we, you know, Robert and I had a great run with you. And didn't, uh, you know, it's being there. Uh, you know, you had the four horsemen, you know, all y'all together. You're out taking on well, Arn. You and Arn. I mean, you and Arn, to me, were a great tag team. What is your. Opinion. Tell me. Well, yeah, I thought it was okay. Yes, I mean, Arnold. You know, I, I, uh, Arn, I thought, did a good job no matter what we were doing. Yes. And that's why I took him as a partner. Guess who told me to take him? Who was that? Ric Flair. Did he? Ric Flair knew Arn and said a bunch of shit. Gene got all fucked up and couldn't wrestle anymore. And so I went to Arn and I said, uh, hey, he wanted to be able to become an Anderson. And he was already, he was already an Anderson. Yes. He wrestled as an Anderson before I even talked to him. Yes. And uh, so afterwards, he wrestled a lot like Gene. He never said a lot about anything. But he wrestled a little bit like Gene. So that made it easy for me. And I could still be me. And he could wrestle like Gene, everything was okay. And as far as I can tell, we probably did, you know, pretty good. Uh, I don't think we were as good as Gene and I were, but good enough anyway to get by. Yeah, that makes any sense. I got you. And that's. And we made a little bit of money. Well, that's great. I mean, and, but how was Laura? Is he a better partner than Arn? Do I know? Laura Anderson. Lauren Anderson. I can't pronounce No, Lars, Lars was like me. Okay. Lars had one problem. He didn't like being second. But here's one thing about Lars that nobody ever knew, except me and Lars. That in a real wrestling match at the college that we both went to, St. Cloud State, I beat him. Did you really? Oh, yeah. What the, I did you read? No, no, okay, yeah. no but, but, but you was telling me, you, were you, did you wrestle at the college that he did too? No, he did, but I didn't. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So you, and you beat him? Yes. He okay. was a big football player. Okay. They liked him as a football player. and they liked him scoop as, on that, how did that occur? Y'all were just messing around? Or no. Just... He hated me and I hated him. I, worked, great, I was huh? in a fraternity at that time. Uh -huh. And the fraternity I was in made the wrestling match up between him and me. I said, what the fuck is that? He said, well, uh, we'd like you to, and then they were gonna invite people there and they would make some money. So I had to go along with it and I did. So Lars at that time 
was 240 pounds. I wrestled at about 185. I was a midget compared to him. But I did the one thing that he wasn't able to do. He couldn't beat me and I beat him. <laughs> okay. So later on, much later, when he got into professional wrestling along with Gene, he called me from the Carolinas. He said, Ole, well at that time I wasn't Ole. I was still Rogowski, Rock Rogowski. He said, yeah, he says, come on down here to the Carolinas. I said, what the fuck is down there? He said, you'll make nothing but money. That was it. I says, I'm coming. I drove my car down to, uh, to Charlotte and Lars and Gene and I wrestled as a threesome. And we made money all that summer in 1970. 70, 76, I think, 75 maybe. And uh, Lars wanted to go back to Minnesota because he was from Minnesota and all that. But, well, so was I. But he wanted to be a star in Minnesota. Exactly. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And I didn't give a shit. You know, a lot of people didn't understand this too because, you know, uh, you know I, I never did. I always called you Mr. Anderson. This is way before, uh, you know, uh, The Rock. Yeah, I mean, I remember back, you know, everybody used to call you The Rock years ago. The, you know, The Rock. And, uh, then when uh, The Rock really got famous for Vince McMahon, I said, well, that was, that's Ole's gimmick. I did, but that was years ago <laughs> and everything. And uh, to do, uh, it was great. I mean, it's a, what a great opportunity it is for me to sit here and uh, to, it, to ask you any questions. You know, I see, and it's great to be sitting there. Tom Pritchard. Yeah. Ask uh, anything you want to know. Ole's right here, and he's telling the truth about everything. No, I, 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 I don't have any questions. It. I just want to tell you, you were one of the greatest guys to be in the ring, and you could have beat the living shit out of me at any minute, too. I worked for you in 82. And you I, what? I worked for you in 1982. In you worked for me? Yes, sir, I did. I didn't think you What's your name? That's uh, Tom Pritchard. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. You you worked you worked underneath though. You were working. Yeah, in oh, a, I was underneath by so guy. You were doing jobs for the TV. Well, I, well, I, I came in for Barnett. You let me do some announcing after Piper left. We, I never was on top, Oli, but I tell you, I worked with you one time, and you locked up with me and said, "Oh my God, you're so easy," and that was one of the greatest compliments I got. Yes, yeah, <laughs> that's the truth. I knew you wouldn't remember me because I wasn't the top guy, but I worked with you and Listen, Hanson. I don't remember anybody. Exactly. I'm not so kidding. bad about that. No, I'm not bad about no, that. No, no, no. It's just, you know. Come on, man. Stir some shit up. No, I don't want to stir any shit I up. Pull, I'm just telling you because I was sitting back there. I'll damn ass here. No, no, no. I worked with you and Hanson. You put me in, in a tag match <laughs> uh, uh, with. Uh, Bob Dowdle, you want some of this? Yeah, I'm just. What was your name? Come get you some of this. Tom Pritchard. It's a long time ago, old. It was 1982, but I'll tell you right now. I, I, His I brother Bruce Pritchard. Pritchard. You could have beat the shit out of me, and I knew it, and I was scared to friggin' death. And all you said was, oh, you're so light. Now, Anybody else got any balls in here? Yeah, I got some balls, I'll tell you what. Well, you know, you know there, was of, <coughs> there was a lot of guys yes. that tried to... Gene was a smart-ass son of a bitch. He got a whole bunch of guys. I said, where the hell did you get these asshole guys? He said he put a deal in the paper or some damn thing. And they wanted to be wrestlers. <laughs> Please. And so, me. well, one of, them was, uh, one of them was uh, the kid that wrestled a little while. Who was the guy from, the guy I like, the kid that I like real well? Sawyer. Who? Sawyer. No, no. Tom Pritchard. <laughs> I remember the name. Who? Yeah, Don Canoe. Don Canoe. Okay, Don and Rocky Canoe. Don could wrestle a little bit. Yes. And uh, but a lot of guys came up to. I want to get in that wrestling business. Okay. That guy was dead. Well, I, I know. I understand. And and I beat the shit out of how many guys? I don't know. And when I got when I got done beating the crap out of them. They'd be laying there like they're all fucked up, and I'd just say, "Listen, I'm gonna let you go now. You just and you get out of this ring and you run like hell to the dressing room. Get your shit. Don't take a shower, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Get your goddamn gear and come running back out and get your car and get the fuck. And I don't want to ever see you again." Uh. Well, the kid would go, "Okay, okay," 
and he'd get out of the ring and he'd, he'd run a little bit and then he'd, then he'd walk. I said, you want me to come and get you now? And boy, he'd, <laughs> he got high gear and he got the hell out of there. But everybody that I, that I wrestled, Don Cronin would be the only one that, one of the very few, that I didn't beat the shit out of because he was a tough kid. And he wanted to learn how to wrestle. And he acted like he was an okay guy. So, uh, but a lot of guys I beat the crap out of. Are you the one that put him and Sergeant Slaughter together? Don Grenoble and Sergeant Slaughter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was sitting for the Crockett's, right? Yep, 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 yep. Okay, that's cool. I remember that back in that day, too. Well, Sergeant that's Slaughter was a pretty decent wrestler, and, you know. Yes. He just. He just missed. He, he had a few things that are a little screwed up with him. A few things. And, He's a little screwed up. No, with him. but that uh, Sergeant Slaughter, when he had, he did a good job. As a matter of fact, uh, he drew yes. crowds in a couple places. But anyway, you know, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Well, I got you. I mean, and I understand. You know, and, and, and like I, I was saying earlier, you know, I had the, one of the greatest opportunities Robert and I did. To understand that that's not out there because we are from the old school of wrestling. I just, and I don't, it's not the old school, it's the right damn way. But we had the opportunity to have a long run with you, uh, to, to have matches with you every night, to work with you. And, and, I, and, and you know, I, well, I don't you know, know if at, you that, remember. at that time, Dusty Rhodes was booking yes. for Crockett. Mm -hmm. And when you and your partner and me and it was Iron, right? Yes. They thought that was just going to drop dead. They thought we were just going to go die over in a field somewhere. Oh, yeah. That's what they wanted. To do. Well, that's what I thought it was going to be, too. Yeah. yeah. I said, hey, Jesus Christ. Who the fuck are these goddamn two fucking kids that don't know their ass from holy ground? But when I got in the ring with you and I saw how you, number one, you listened, and number two, you goddamn made a good comeback and you sold, I said, we should make money. And by God, we made money with you for a little while there. Yes, we sure did. And that's from everybody that drew the crowds. This is what old school wrestling was about. It was about working with each other because, and understand, we didn't have contracts. We depended on each other to make a living. And where I'm going to with this, you know, about depending, uh, I never, uh, I don't know if you remember this either again. Robert and I was working with you at Arn, and Arn was drunk. He couldn't stand up in the ring, and I never forget this. He Arn did a thing and fell on me. And you were right in the ring, you grabbed an arm and you threw him out of the ring. You said, tonight you stay out of the ring, I do everything, you're gonna hurt these kids and we're not gonna be able to make no money. I never forget you know, when you, you said know, that. I, I, uh, that was in Charleston, West Virginia. But to understand me, you was the leader, you was the rock. You led the, you led the pack, you led us, we listened to everything and it was a great, absolute play. And I learned, remember I, I did a little thing and I told about you how much I learned it's not a part about when you set me down, just being in the ring with you, learning and listening to you and, and how you listen to the people and how you work the arm. And you know, guys don't even nowadays, if, you know, if you don't shoot some son of a bitch out of a cannon, they think you don't know how to get no yeah, heat. Yeah. And it's, you know, our business, we, I've watched it change a lot. But sitting here, absolutely pleasure, Mr. Anderson. Well, even if it wasn't, you're still sitting here. Yes, sir, I sure would be. And, it, and, I, and if I didn't like it, I have to lie because it whooped my ass. Wonderful pleasure. Thank you so much for Thank your you time. Much. Appreciate it. Thank you for all the years and to all the fans out there coming for me. Thank you for being Ole Anderson. He don't give a shit. Thank you. Thank you.